you're watching a free sample video from Teachers Test Prep. For videos like this one covering every area of your exam, visit us today at www.teacherstestprep.com. Temperature, thermal energy, and heat. Um, let's talk about these concepts and the, the ideas uh, relating to them that you may be uh, asked about on the exam. Um, first of all, temperature is the measure of the kinetic energy in a substance, um, in that substance's molecules. And really what we're saying is the faster the molecules move, the hotter that thing is. So heat causes molecular movement, molecular movement causes heat. And really, if you prefer to think of it this way, it, molecular movement is heat. So the faster something moves, the hotter we call that thing. Um, if you look at the uh, animation here, you can see helium atoms at room temperature moving at 1 12 trillionth of their regular speed. Um, so these molecules move very quickly. And if you look uh, at one of the red ones, so it's easier for your eye to follow, you'll see that when it approaches another molecule, it sort of bounces or moves away. Um, and that's why substances spread out or become less dense as they get hotter. That's why a gas is less dense than a liquid. Because as the molecules move more quickly, they don't want to run into each other, so they move further apart, creating that space. Um, now let's talk about the idea of thermal energy. Um, unlike heat, the amount of thermal energy depends on the quantity of a substance. So if you have an entire ocean at 75 degrees, um, or you have a pot of water on your kitchen stove at 75 degrees, those have the same temperature, but they don't have the same amount of thermal energy. Because the more, uh, the greater that quantity, the more energy it takes to heat it up to that level, and therefore the more energy is stored in the moving molecules of that thing. Um, so a bathtub, for example, at 90 degrees has more thermal energy than a cup of coffee at 120 degrees. Um, even though the temperature of the coffee is higher, um, if you thought about the amount of electrical energy or gas energy that you would need to heat that cup of coffee to 120 versus heating that whole bathtub to 90, you'd actually spend more on the energy uh, to heat that bathtub. And so that's a way to think about um, the difference between heat and thermal energy. Let's say on the exam they ask you something like, which has more thermal energy? A vat of molten iron at 2,000 degrees, uh, for example, um, or the Pacific Ocean uh, at roughly 70 to 75 degrees? That's right, the Pacific Ocean, because there's so much more of it. Think of the Pacific Ocean as the world's largest solar panel. It absorb, absorbs a great deal of thermal energy and has more thermal energy in it than just about anything on Earth. Now let's talk about the ways in which heat is transferred. There's three main ways that you need to know for the exam. Conduction, convection, and radiation. Conduction occurs when fast-moving molecules bump into or affect nearby molecules and cause them to move faster. Um, a great example of this is a bowl of soup with a spoon uh, in that bowl. So you have the hot soup and your spoon is sitting in it. You can touch the end of the handle um, and you feel the warmth um, even though that part of the spoon never touched the hot liquid soup. Well, what happened is the hot soup uh, has faster moving molecules which bump into the molecules that are in the spoon, part of the spoon that is in the soup. And those bump into other molecules farther up the spoon's handle and they bump into other ones even further up the handle and it propagates uh, that movement up at a molecular level up through the handle to the part that you touch and you feel the warmth. Um, so that's an example of conduction. You can also think about it sort of like a large group of people packed in together in a concert um, and somebody shifts to the side and bumps somebody else and then that person bumps someone and bumps someone and you have this sort of domino effect. Um, well that's what's happening at a molecular level when heat is conducted. With convection, we usually see this in liquids and gases. Um, and what's happening is a hotter portion moves up and a cooler portion fills in that space. Um, and this creates this sort of cyclonic or circular uh, action that's associated with convection. Um, you can uh, see an example of this in a pot of boiling water. The hot part down near the flame on the stove rises up, and as that hot water rises up, the cooler surrounding water above it moves in to take its place, and that's why you get this churning action when you're boiling water. 
The reason you see the bubbles in the boiling water, by the way, is because as that cooler water comes down, it takes some air with it. And that air goes down to the bottom and then you see it bubbling back up. So we see this also, this act of, uh, action of convection in, for example, a convection oven. Um, in that case, it's gas instead of liquid. Um, so the, the air um, is, a, is a gas or a combination of different gases and that air is cycling around um, as hotter portions rise and cooler portions fill in the, uh, the space that's left by those, leaving, uh, those hot portions leaving. Um, and the last form of heat transfer you need to know is radiation. Radiation typically occurs with high intensity reactions. The sun, for example, which is a giant nuclear fusion reaction, um, is radiating uh, heat and electromagnetic energy outward. Um, you also see this um, in nuclear power plants or if a nuclear weapon detonates or something like that, radiation occurs. So those are just a few examples of how radiation occurs. Um, here's sort of a, a summarized way to think of these. Um, with conduction, that's something that occurs in solid typically. Um, so if you're looking at a solid and heat is being transferred through it, probably conduction. Convection typically occurs in liquids and gases when something move, a uh, hot portion moves and cooler portion takes its place. So if you're looking at liquids and gases and you're getting that cyclonic action, you're probably looking at convection. Um, and lastly, if you have a high intensity reaction, something like the sun or a nuclear reaction, um, that's probably going to be radiation. So that's a sort of way to think about each different type of heat, heat transfer. We hope you found this free teacher's test prep sample video helpful. For more videos like this one covering all the subject matter and strategy you need to pass your exam, visit us today at www.teacherstestprep.com.